Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is my Whale Wars Episode 5, Season 5, Review and Recap. So in the last episode, one of the ships, the Steve Irwin, was going to go down and help the smaller ship, the Bridget Bardot, get people off it because it has a huge crack that can go on at any second. So this episode starts out that the Steve Irwin has a tail and they get the people off the Bridget Bardot and onto the Steve Irwin and they're going to Australia to try to fix the boat if it can make it there but they have a tail and when they reach Australian waters always before the Japanese vessels never crossed to Australian waters but in this episode for the first time the Japanese whalers cross that border and the sea shepherds start getting worried so after the japanese whalers follow them into australian shores paul watson the captain has a plan to take two small boats into the water and distract the whalers and use a new tactic where they get these plugs and put them into cooling vents on the side of the vessel to possibly overheat the engine so they try this tactic they go up right next to the boat and put two plugs in hoping that it will stall the engines but it doesn't work so the sea shepherds managed to finally make it into australian shores and the bridget bardo too it made it all the while the japanese whalers are waiting for them to come out and keep following them and that's when paul watson says you know what i have a big plan if australians board the ship the australian government should not let Australian citizens leave the country in a Japanese vessel. So basically the Steve Irwin can slip out of there while the Japanese vessel that has the Australian citizens on there stays there in Australia. And then in this part of the show they do the flashback of the last person to attempt to do this who is Pete Bethune. He is a legend. He did it after they sunk his boat and he spent over three months in Japanese jail for it and nothing happened to the captain that was driving the boat who rammed Pete Bethune's Audi Gill. But yeah, that guy is a legend. And Paul Watson is having a meeting with his crew and telling them the risks and everything. And that is his plan. And then ladies and gentlemen, there is good news and bad news. The bad news is after doing some investigation, Paul Watson finds out that the Australian government is most likely not going to stop the Japanese whalers from leaving if they have Sea Shepherd Australians. So that plan is gone, but there is good news. And this is where I review the episode. Just when you think things can't get worse, they get worse because you can't script what happens in the sea. And just when you think there's no possible solution, they always find a way. And what happened is they find some activists that are not members of the Sea Shepherd, but are Australians that volunteer to go and board the Japanese vessel to help the Sea Shepherds out. Wow, that's awesome. So they get the activists on board the Steve Irwin and start going over how dangerous this mission is, how they can spend a lot of time in jail. They just start going over everything, how to plan this. We're gonna do this at night. We know the risks and we're doing this for the future of our kids. You're just watching this and you're like, you can't fake that drama. You know, there's fake drama shows and then there's this, you just can't fake that stuff. And then at night, they get everything ready. They start putting on the big jackets. They start getting the boats ready and you feel that tension. You feel what they are about to do is extraordinary. And the two boats carrying the people finally get on the water and then they start heading towards the Japanese whaler. And then of course something had to happen. One of the engine dies from one of the small boats. And you're just like, oh. That's what I'm talking about with this show. There's so much tension and drama. It's crazy. You just don't know what's going to happen next. So then they call the Steve Irwin and say, we have engine problems. Can you help us with this? We need some sort of override code or something. They go online and find out that it's all electronic issue. And Paul Watson says, you know what? Just transfer the men to the other boat and finish the mission. And we'll come get you guys in a stranded boat. Everybody knows that is extremely risky, but they're willing to do that for the mission. All the while, daylight is coming very soon. And so they transfer the men. They start heading towards the vessel. And when they start approaching it, the vessel starts picking up speed. And you're just watching this feeling the tension. 
So the Japanese whalers definitely spot the small boat coming towards them. They find out that there's barbed wire all around and then they see people on board start yelling at them and as they're coming down they say this is our only shot. They go right up to the boat and board it. One, two, three and they did it. They boarded the vessel and then the boat goes away and the guys are like for the whales boys for the whales and then they're like yeah for the whales for the whales right there for the whales boys for the whales and then they leave them they go off they're like yeah yes and then the show ends. Whew. How good is this show? It's just amazing. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my next videos. I will be reviewing a lot more. Not just Whale Wars 2. Thank you. Whales.